What is the sound of permutations? In the sport of change ringing, a team of people, each ringing one bell, play a long sequence of permutations without any repetitions. They use no written score, so they're following an algorithm for generating permutations in their head. With n notes, there are n factorial sequences in which you can play them. So with these 10 bells, there are over 3 million possible orders, and it would take months to play them all. To see the idea, let's simplify to just three notes. There are six permutations of A, B, and C, so it's easy to play them all. I just played them in alphabetic order, which is easy on the piano, but that doesn't work with bells. Church bells are massive, weighing hundreds or thousands of pounds, so they have a natural period to their swing that's not easy to lengthen or shorten. So when change ringing, the timing of each bell can't move by more than one position forward or back from one permutation to the next. For example, playing the six permutations of three notes in alphabetic order wouldn't be allowed because there's a time when B moves two places from position three to position one and later it moves two places again from position 1 to position 3. Here I've made a line whenever a position changes, and the red lines show the large, illegal moves. But there's a different order for playing the six permutations, not alphabetic, where no bell moves more than one position. In this pattern, we swap the left pair and then the right pair, alternately. This is basically the only solution with three bells, other than playing the permutations in the reverse sequence. Notice that this pattern is cyclic. After all six permutations are played, you're back to the start. Since the 1600s, bell ringers have been exploring the combinatorics of different patterns, memorizing various methods, and playing them on up to a dozen bells. It takes amazing concentration and sometimes physical stamina because they can play in marathon sessions that last several hours. You first pick n, the number of bells you want to use, and you always start and end with the n bells in scale sequence. Then mathematically, the problem reduces to two rules. One, no permutation can be repeated, except that you start and end in order. And two, the position of each bell from one permutation to the next can either stay the same or move by at most one place. For example, with four bells, a simple pattern called plain bob visits all 24 permutations in this sequence. The pattern is visual. Both pairs swap, then the middle pair swaps, alternately. Except at the one-third point, the two-third point, and the very end, there's a special move in which only the rightmost pair swaps. This simple structure allows the performers to memorize the pattern and carry it through without written notes. The conductor of a change ringing team calls out the times for the special moves. But you can imagine how much practice and expertise is required to execute longer sequences, such as the 5,040 permutations of seven bells, which takes about three hours. Change ringing is like audible set theory, and it's also like a grand right and left of square dancing with sound. There's a lovely way to see what's going on from a more abstract perspective. Mathematicians define a permutahedron as a polyhedron with each vertex corresponding to one of the n factorial ways of permuting n objects. This is the permutahedron for four items. It has 24 vertices, and there's a connecting edge whenever two permutations are related by a single swap. We can also add an edge for the change we saw where two pairs swap. Then each legal sequence of all 24 permutations corresponds to a round trip visiting each vertex in the permutahedron once, what mathematicians call a Hamiltonian cycle on the graph. With this perspective, one can count that even with just four bells, there are over 10,000 possible sequences that could be played. Almost all of the four bell patterns have never been heard, and there are enormously many patterns with five, six, or more bells, so there's plenty of future work for change ringers in the upcoming centuries. This 10 bell pattern is called Grand Sir Caters, and people have been ringing it since the 1600s. 
The great thing about change ranking is that people come at it from so many different viewpoints and with so many different interests. There's, if you like math, there's something in it for you. If you like music, if you like making loud noises and waking up all the neighbors, if you like the physical challenge of ringing a heavy bell for a long time, and if you like the teamwork of working with all the other ringers, because each person's got to cooperate, all those different um, viewpoints in ringing are ways that different people have come to it. Change ringing mostly takes place in old churches, because that's where the bells are but there's nothing especially religious about it. I film these ringers at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., but you can find groups ringing changes near you wherever you are, all around the world. It's a wonderful example of a highly mathematical activity with a long and rich tradition. Mathematicians have been analyzing the possibilities and creating new change ringing patterns for centuries. And given the timeless intellectual pleasure that mathematics offers, I expect change ringing to continue to grow and develop for many more centuries.